Okay, um, next thing I want to talk about is uh, caching because it's very different from other uh, frameworks around. Um, because we don't have a caching system per se, uh, as we only rely on HTTP caching. Um, so, uh, HTTP caching basically is about validation or expiration, so you can set HTTP errors to say, okay, I want my page to be uh, valid for a day, or valid uh, uh, with the last modified header, or with an e-tag, or whatever. Um, that's only what we provide by default in Symfony 2. Um, these HTTP headers can be understood by um, reverse proxies like Squid or Vanish, and as, no, uh, as some people can't really afford to install such proxies, we also provide um, a PHP uh, reverse proxy, HTTP proxy, which means that you can use uh, Varnish or Squid, or you can use the built-in um, HTTP proxy uh, provided uh, with Symfony 2. So let's take an example. This is a very simple page. So there is a layout, and we have uh, the main controller, and I have an embed controller. Uh, the main one is uh, cacheable for 10 seconds or whatever, and the second one is cacheable but uh, with a different um, uh, time to life. Um, so this page can be done like this in Symfony 2. So we extend a layout, that's okay. We have a sidebar, this is a slot, and within the slot, uh, this actions thing is how you can render another page within the current page. This is how you can render another controller within the current page. Um, so which means that everything is cacheable for 10 seconds except for um, this action here which is only cacheable for five seconds. Um, so this means that this small snippet of code must have its own caching strategy. Uh, and to have its own caching strategy in Symfony 2, it means that it must have its own response object because remember, we only rely on HTTP headers. So instead of just merging the contents, we need to keep the whole response. Which means that this snippet of code, this action, this controller, this template um, must be standalone. And this is possible in Symfony. You can just say, okay, uh, I want this snippet of code within the page to be standalone. And when standalone force, which is the default, Symfony will merge the included page content uh, within the main one, like this, okay? But as soon as you say that the standalone parameter is true, and if Symfony 2 detects that it talks to an HTTP accelerator uh, that understands a special technology called ESI, uh, then it will generate an include tag like this, okay? Which means that uh, the proxy will make another request to get the content of um, this include. But if there is no HTTP accelerator, or if there is one, but if it does not understand ESI, then Symfony will just merge the included pages content with the main one, as it would have done when uh, standalone falls. So it will just fall back to that. Okay. So ESI um, edge site includes is um, a technology, a specification written by Akame um, in 2001, um, and. This specification is, of course, implemented if you use uh, Akame, uh, the service, um, the web service, the, the, um, the product. Uh, and it's also implemented in some HTTP accelerator uh, like Varnish and Squid, but it doesn't really work in Squid. And the Symfony 2 HTTP proxy also implements the, a subset of the ESI specification. So basically, this is how it works. Um, when a request comes in, from the client. The proxy get the page from the cache or it calls the backend application. So the first time it will call the backend application to get the page and then for 10 seconds it will get the page from uh, the cache. And then if the response contains one or more included include tags, ESI include tags, then the proxy behaves like for uh, the main request, which means that it gets the included page content from its cache 
if it exists, and if not, it will call uh, the backend application again. And then it merges everything in the, um, every, all the included page into the main page, and it will uh, send it back to, uh, to the client. So without any cache, uh, all the requests will go through the web server and the CV application, and then go back to um, the browser. If you enable the cache layer of Symfony 2, uh, which is the HTTP uh, proxy, then if um, you only hit the Symfony application if the page is not in the cache. And as the cache layer is totally independent of uh, Symfony 2, uh, it means that when you hit the cache, you won't uh, even boot the application, which means that Symfony 2 won't be included, which means that it's, it's very fast. And the great thing about using uh, plain HTTP headers is that you can also replace the Symfony 2 HTTP proxy with your own uh, proxy varnish, for instance, which means that in this case, you can have outstanding performance because you won't even uh, go through uh, your web server. So you won't even have any PHP included anywhere. Yeah, any question on the, on the cache system? No question? Really? OK. Uh, okay. Sorry? Yeah. My email address is everywhere on the internet. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Just open any Symfony file, and there is my email address. Um, last but not least, I want to briefly talk about a component that is uh, the core component of Symfony, the HTTP kernel. Um, the HTTP kernel component is, uh, provides a lot of our architecture and the building blocks needed to create uh, a framework, and especially uh, the Symfony 2 MVC uh, framework. So basically, the Symfony 2 framework relies on this simple interface uh, with just one method. And this method is handle, it handles, so it, you need to uh, create a kernel that handles request and return responses. And that's all. With only that in face, um, and of course, um, the request and response classes, uh, you can build a framework. And your framework will be compatible with Symfony 2. Uh, of course, you will have to do uh, a, a lot of things yourself, but, but it will be compatible with Symfony 2. Now, if you go one step further, and if you extend the default implementation of this uh, interface, which is named HTTP kernel in Symfony, then uh, the component gives you much more power, uh, which means that you will be able to use the caching system I've talked about. You will be able uh, to use the profiling and the web debug toolbar. You will be able to use the functional test, et cetera, et cetera. So you will have a lot of different things out of the box without buying the whole framework. And this default implementation is really simple. It relies on an event system, which means that um, the under method does not nothing really by default. Uh, just notifies a bunch of events like call request, uh, controller view, and response. And you need to implement another object with two different uh, two methods, get controller and get arguments. The first one, get controller, uh, is a method able to um, take a request, and based on the request parameters, arguments, whatever, it should return a controller. A controller is just a PHP callable. So it can be a method of class, can be a closure, it can be whatever you want, a function. Uh, Symfony doesn't care. And then a second one, get arguments, uh, should return uh, the arguments to pass to uh, the PHP callable. So it's very flexible. You can really do uh, pretty in interesting things. And if you do that, it will be compatible with, uh, with Symfony 2. Okay, the next slide is really um, a big picture of Symfony 2 and all the um, libraries you can use. So at the bottom of the screen, you can see uh, the components. Uh, I've talked about HTTP kernel. 
HP Foundation is really just an abstraction on top of PHP to abstract the global variables and uh, the function uh, uh, like uh, set header, uh, header, set cookie, etc. So you can use that by itself if you want. And we provide uh, a lot of different libraries uh, that you can use standalone, uh, like the routing after the batch. You can use the routing system standalone without using anything else uh, from Symfony, the tumbling system, the infant dispatcher, the dependency injection. I don't really. Um, I haven't talked about that one, the console, et cetera, et cetera. We, we have a bunch of them. Um, and if you use the HTTP kernel and the framework component, you can also use all the bundles. So framework bundle is a default bundle that implements the MVC uh, pattern uh, for Symfony 2. And then the bundles are really, um, they provide integration for um, external libraries uh, uh, to provide a cohesive experience for the end user, which means that um, if you use the Twig bundles and bundle, et cetera, et cetera, you will have the same unified configuration mechanism I've shown before, which means that you will be able to configure all those libraries uh, with the same configuration file, with the same uh, system, um, uh, which, is, which is great. Um, okay, I think that's it. Um, for the technical part, but I think uh, Symfony 2 is not just you know a product. It's also about the community. Um, um, Stefan will talk about the community a bit more and why we think that Symfony 2 is really a good framework to uh, base uh, PHP BB4.